Hey Stitch Cuties, I'm Brittany with Stitches of Love Quilting and welcome to the video tutorial for making this adorable Miss May Petunia block. So there are two ways you can make this. You can do a one with the embroidery add-on files where you're doing all the buttonhole and applique stitching on your embroidery machine or you can do it by um, placing all your units down on your background fabric and then using a regular sewing machine. So I'm going to guide you through both ways. This video is going to show you how to do the placement of all of your applique pieces. So let's get started. First off, I just have to remind you what a cute box this come in, comes in. You can see it's a collaboration with our friend Amy of Amy Brucken Designs. And then of course, that's us, Stitches of Love. Now, you'll have your pattern in your box. You're going to take it out and put it in your binder. But what we're going to do first, I'm going to get all of my pieces that are reversed. And for this month, this little girl, Miss Petunia, has 58 pieces. So that sounds daunting, right? I'm gonna show you how to make it really easy. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our pieces. Let's start with our flowers, right? And we are going to match them up. So this, these are the pieces reversed, right? So that means you're gonna put bottom side or back side up. You're just gonna line up your applique piece where it goes. And that's number 19. I'm going to write a 19. So I'm going to do that for all of my pieces so that when I go to actually start building my unit, because there's so many flowers that look really similar but are different, that's why I like to number it. So I don't do this every single month when I have a piece. Sometimes the pieces are just like really easy to tell what's what. On this one though, there's a bunch of pieces and this makes it easy. And I'm all about easy and I know you are too. You want to have fun. You want to make sure that you're piecing your applique everything is accurate without having to think too hard so what we're going to do is just number all of these so just hang out with me for a second while we do that and we have this piece that's number 25 and you can do this on any project like i said sometimes i don't do it sometimes i do it just depends on if I think I can tell the pieces apart. And look at this, it's like a puzzle. <laughs> 23, this one must be two. Yep. Okay, so we have all the purples. So let's set those aside. I like to keep just like a little pile and then I'll start organizing it into numbers. And again, you can fast forward and go through the tutorial as fast or slow as you want. I like to give a lot of detail so I know some of you, this might be your first time doing a block of the month or an applique project. So I just want to give you as many tips and tricks as I can. Plus, it's just really fun to do, right? There we go. This one is number 42. Easy peasy, right? And again, the reason we have it where the back side is up is because these pieces are reversed, right? So when we go to actually use our placement guide and they're flipped, they'll be the right direction. Fun little trick, huh? There we go. Okay, so now we have a whole bunch of little greens. Identifying the little feet are pretty easy. Now the whites, I did go on and take my, um, you can see there's only one outline of them, but we give you two in the kit and that's because we're going to double line it. I'll show you that trick. But I did because they're pretty different. For the whites, I'm not numbering them. I just have them piled together off to the side. So we know that this is our big body. I'm gonna go through and identify all my greens and all my yellows. You do the same thing and we'll be back in a second to get started. Okay, so now we have all our pieces labeled. I'm gonna tell you a little trick. If you're doing this on your regular sewing machine and not your embroidery machine, the yellow dots are all different shapes and it doesn't really matter which yellow dot goes on which flower. So fun fact, I'm just gonna like eyeball the yellow dots but you again can number each one and get it exactly where it goes so what I'm gonna do is start putting my pieces in kind of an order right so I am going to take for example the flowers I know that they start at number two for down here but I'm gonna go on and start with number 15 because that's really our first flower that we start putting down I'm sorry number 12 so we're gonna take 12 then we're gonna go to 15, and I'm just gonna start making a pile, right? 15, 17, do, 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 Well, I know I just had it. What'd I do with it? Number 17, is it right in front of me, y'all? 
Look, I numbered two number 19s. That's what I did. Look at that, y'all. This is number 17. Almost like I know I have everything. So number 17, then number 19, then we're gonna do 21, then we'll do 23, then 25, then 27, 29, 31, 33, 35, 37, 39. Now 42, if you'll notice, goes after the head. So I'm just gonna leave that one aside. We're not gonna use it just yet. And number two, I know goes at the bottom. Okay, so I kind of have my pieces in a semblance of an order at least to when I get to my flowers. Okay, so now that we have sort of a semblance of piles, I'm gonna gently put my fabric, my little pieces to the side, and I'm gonna get my favorite tool, which is my pressing mat, my fusing mat. I'm gonna put it over my steady Betty, and I'm gonna take my placement guide. I'm gonna get my pieces where I can see them. We're gonna put this underneath, okay? So again, I'm going a lot of detail here, going step by step, and you can go as fast or as slow as you want on this process. So what we're gonna do is build a couple units to make this much easier, okay? So what I'm gonna do is put down piece number one, and what I love about this precision fusing mat, it's kind of tacky, right? So I don't have to like iron it immediately for it to stay in place. Now we're gonna put down our flower number two and you just turn it till it's in its place. Just make sure you get it in place and see how what we're doing is building units. And what I'm gonna do is build like an arm. I'm gonna build her little leg unit down here then we're gonna start putting it all together, right? And then we have the flower center. So I'm just gonna give those a tap together, just for a second. You don't need to do it for very long. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna put four, five, six, seven. So keep your thing in place, number four. There we go, and remember we have two of these. And the reason we have two of these is because when it comes to white, not in all instances, but in a lot of instances, you want a double line. And that's so you don't see what's underneath. You don't want that shining through. So we do, we're just stacked two on top of each other. Now we need our piece number five, which I have up here labeled easy peasy. And we're gonna iron that in place. There you go. And you just wanna iron where it overlaps, it's delicate, and you don't wanna overheat, right? Because you can eventually, if you keep ironing and keep ironing on your heating bond line, it'll get where it just doesn't stick anymore. And you don't want that. I've actually never had it happen, but I know it can. And then I'm gonna put our two layers right here and give it a press. And then number seven. And number seven is gonna be the piece that connects everything right here in this unit, right? So cute. Doo -doo -doo. And then get that right in place. Perfect, and give it a tap. Now while that's cooling off, we're gonna move on and make another unit. So one thing I'm gonna do we have numbers eight and nine over here for her arm. I'm just gonna make sure I know I have number eight. And again, we have two number eights. We're gonna stack them. There we go. Our second number eight. Give those a press and now we need number nine. We're gonna build an arm unit over here. Now I'm gonna tell you when this one has so many pieces if you have a light box, it's really nice because once we put that body down, it's gonna be a little harder to see through, right? Because you're having to look through your fabric. So if you have a light box, you can use your light box under your fusing mat and you can gently move your fusing mat from your light pad over back to your steady beddy or your pressing surface. All right, now we're gonna jump over here 
And you can see we have 10, 11, 12, and 13 that are a unit that go underneath the body. So we're gonna build those. So we have our two number 10s. There we go. Iron those together. And then that was, oh, number 11. Oh my gosh, I almost went straight to the flower and skipped number 11. That would not have been good, huh? She needs to have her full hand. All right, put that right in place. Now we can do number 12. So easy just to line this up, right? Applique really is easy. I know a lot of people get kind of scared of it. I think it's even easier than piecing, right? I mean, you're just putting it down where it goes. It's fantastic. And again, I'm just gonna grab any of the yellow dots that I wanna grab and put it in the center. So cute. There we go. Okay, so now we have a few units and I'm gonna move on to building other units, right? We're gonna assemble the full little girl at the end, the full Miss Petunia. So you just gently remove this from your pressing sheet. Look at that, you have a perfect unit, right? So I'm just gonna set it aside. That one's still cooling, so I'm gonna start down here and see how easy that comes up. Look at that perfect unit. I promise, building units makes your life so easy. There we go. Now, I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit and build 41, 42, 43, all right? And then we're gonna build our whole center and put it all together, right? And so we need two pieces of her white face, which is number 41. And when you have a big piece, I like to make sure I get all of it in place. There we go. And then we're gonna put her second layer together. Look at that, perfect. And we're gonna just gently tap those together. You're not securing it all the way yet. When it gets to the fabric, that's when you're gonna do that, right? Now remember 42 is what we're putting on now. <laughs> How cute is she? And then you need a little center, my little yellow center. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. And so we're just gonna tap where that layers. Look at that. So now, haven't had to do my shake yet, but I gotta do my shake now. Cause you don't wanna burn yourself when you're peeling this. So if you kinda lift it up and let it cool, it feels good. Look at her. <laughs> okay, so now let's get to the nitty gritty. First off, let's talk about what numbers we're gonna do, right? So we've already built all the way to 12 and we left off down here. We've already done up to seven. We've done eight and nine all the way to 12. So now we're gonna start with number, what would that be, 13? Oh, we did 13 already, it's on the flower. So then 14 is this huge body, right? So that's what we're gonna start with. We're gonna build her whole inside. So let's get number 14 and put it in place. Doo -doo -doo. And you just make sure you have her body turned the right way. Did I have it the right way already? Doo, 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 doo. Where does her body go? Sometimes I crack myself up when I can't figure out which direction. There she is. Oh, I had her right. There we go. All right, so just gently put that there. So now, if you'll notice, I put these in order, right? Starting with number 15. So, with this, Again, I would use a light box on this block. We are going to, one, make sure we have that position the right way. There we go. And then you need a center. And again, you can use any center you want or you can like actually number your flower centers. There we go. Perfect. Then number 17, this one you definitely wanna make sure you get in the right place. So, there we go. And how I'm going to make sure I have it in the right place, I'm not going to iron this on yet, but I'm going to put my flower in place and that way I know that I have this where she belongs. See? Nice trick, huh? Perfect. So, we'll iron that and take a look 
at our flower center. There we go. And the flower center is fully visible. It's not underlapped at all. So we're just gonna put that up here. Now we're gonna move to number 19, which is right here. And what's fun with her, you can really be creative about how you put this on. There are no quilt police here at Stitches of Love and there shouldn't be any quilt police in your house either. Cause this is all about enjoying yourself. So now we're gonna do 21, which we're just gonna double check. Look at this, 21, we're gonna jump down here, right? And the reason we're jumping down is cause this is layered underneath of the next two flowers. So what I'm doing is just lifting this. I'm gonna make sure I have it facing the right direction. And then I come back up, I'm gonna put that there. Then I'm gonna get number 23 in place before I press that down. And I'm gonna get number 25 in place so that I can make sure I have the overlaps where I want it, right? So now 25. It's funny, just a few pieces in how much she's already coming to life, right? So just gently hold that. Number 25 goes right there. Perfect, I like how it's overlapping, see? That looks good, so I'm ready to press that down. And now each of those need a flower center. So let's get three flower centers over here. Boop. And then a second one. There we go. And then a third. She's so, so cute. I can't wait to see it all done. There we go. Okay, so let's take a look at where we are, right? What I love about this, you can peek, right? So now we're gonna do number 27. Now, 27 needs to definitely be in the right position. So we're gonna do our trick again, where we put our face in place because this goes just a hair underneath our piece. So I'm gonna make sure I have this facing the right way, right? like this. There we go. Again, if you're on a light box, this kind of maneuvering that I'm doing, you don't need to do because you'll be able to see through. And then just slide that there. Perfect. And again, we're not ironing that down yet, right? This white, because we're not to that point yet. So this needs a flower center. Doo -doo -doo. So you can see we're just going to follow the numbers the entire time makes it really nice and easy. And I will say most blocks don't have this many pieces. All right, so that was 27. Now we're gonna do 29 and 30 right here. So fun, aren't these colors so pretty too? I love it. And a flower center. There we go. Iron that right on, boop. And now 31, 32. <laughs> I really enjoy this. I find it relaxing and calming and you get to be so creative, but without having to like, you know, invent it from the beginning. That's why I love kits, right? You feel like you got something done. You get to go right to the fun part. I mean, it's fun sometimes to pick out all your fabrics, but especially right now when we can't maybe be in the shops as much as we want. It's really fun to have these kits at home. So now number 33. So let's make sure we get this one facing the right way. Like this. Perfect. And it needs a flower center. We're getting there y'all. We're getting there. Let's press that. Now we have number 35 and 35 goes between the ear and the face, right? So we're gonna do that trick again where we lay this in place, but we're not gonna iron it down. And we're gonna slide this piece where we want it. So just slide that up. I like that. So 
just hold that in place and give it a press and then have our yellow circle. Doo, 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 doo. Only a few more flowers and then we're gonna assemble her all together. And so all this work that you've done right now is gonna totally pay off because you're gonna have a really accurate Miss Petunia. All right, so we have number 37, which goes right there. And we need a yellow flower for her. Or no, yellow flower, yellow flower center. Y'all know what I mean. There we go. And then our final flower. And then we're gonna put all of our pieces together. So see, we took something that had tons of pieces and we've taken it down to step by step. And that makes everything easier. Okay, see, we have her entire body built. So now we will put our little head in place and we can actually iron this on now, right? So just make sure you've got it right where she belongs. Let me scooch her up just a little. How good does that look? I love it. Now, remember our arm unit over here, this goes fully under her. So just gently lift that up. And we're gonna get this right in place. Look at that. See how we took 58 pieces and broke it down into segments and made this just so doable? I love it. Now we're just gonna gently lift right here. There we go. And get the arm in place. There we go. Give those a press. And now let's put our feetsies on. So we do still have pieces left, right? All these little greens, they float on the fabric, right? They're not actually on her, except for one, number 58 is. But we don't need to put that on till the end. So just to make sure you've got her lined up nicely looking good and we'll press right there okay so now it's time to put it on the fabric that's so much fun okay so see do your shake and now we're just gonna gently 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 peel one big unit up look how awesome that is awesome as can be so now we don't need our um, fusing mat right now at all but we need our background fabric so let me get my trash out of the way. I like to have a trash bowl with me and I didn't bring one. So my fabric, I've already pressed it. And so all you need to do is make sure that your fabric is covering. It's going out past this outer line because that's ultimately going to be our trim line, right? So see how you can see through? I think you can see through mine on the camera. What we're going to do is put her right in place. Voila! Was that easy or what? So now we just iron her on for real. How cool is that? Was that not easy? That was easy. Make applique fun and easy, cause it is. All right, so now all we have to do are put our little green accents and you can have fun with that. Yes, we have a placement guide and you can make it exactly where those are or you can just, you know, put them where you want on the outside. I'm gonna roughly follow it. I'm not gonna be like super, you know, crazy about where it goes. So 44, we're just gonna work in a circle, right? And then we have 45. Then we have number 46. Remember, I do have those labeled. Can y'all see off to the side? I wrote on the back of all of them. So 46. 47, so let's iron those down. Look at that, so cute. She's so happy, she's like bursting, I love it. Now on the side, we follow with 48, 49. See, right here, oh, I need to iron that a little longer. I will in just a second when I put these on. So, 48 and 49. So see when I zap these, I'll iron that arm down a little more. There we go. 
Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Now, right here, we have 50, 51. See, right there? So number 50. And 51 is a big leaf. So that's 50. 51. And 51, you can have it kind of overlap on her if you want or come right up to it. I'm going to have it come right up to it. And then I know that we have 52, 53, and 54. So I'm just going to go on and put those while we're down here too. So 52. Do, do, do. If you have tweezers, you can use those also to kind of like help you get things in place. So here's number 53. And then 54 does go over her. There we go. 54. <laughs> she's so cute. And she's so much fun to stitch. So in just a second, once we have everything ironed on, I'll show you how we stitched it. All right. And now let's take a look at where we're going over here. We have 55, 56, 57. And then that final one is going to go right there on her. So... 55, 56, oh, oh, I almost dropped it. I did drop it. Y'all, I just dropped it on the floor. Oh no, I dropped one. I can't see it where I dropped it. Okay, well mine's gonna have one not ironed on because I truly just dropped it on the floor in front of myself. That's not good, huh? I'll find it on the floor in a second. Oh my goodness, I know it's right here. Oh, I found her. Oh, but I stepped on it. I got it dirty from stepping on it. I don't want to put it on here then. Okay, well, I'll find the one I just dropped. It was in my hand. All right, and this is number 58 right in the center right here. So let's iron all of those down. And voila, we have everything on there. Unless you're like me and you just dropped one on the floor. I'll find it back and iron it where it goes up here. But this is so... Cute, I can't wait to stitch it. So let's talk about how we stitched it. So I like to start, well, let's first talk about the order of stitching, right? So here's my trick. It's kind of like applique by numbers, right? I go to piece number one. Piece number one is aqua. So guess what I do? I work my way around all the aqua numbers, right? So I go number one, aqua, and then I go, okay, where's my next aqua one, right? So 15, and then I'm gonna go over to 21, and then I'll go over to 29, and then 33, 35, and 42, right? So now I know I have all my aqua done. Now I'm gonna go to what's piece number two, purple? Okay, cool, I'm gonna work my way up with all the purples. So I'm gonna go number two, and then I'll go up here to number 12. Then we'll do this little cluster right here, 17, 19, 23. Jump down here to 25, up to 27 and 31. And then over here to 37 and 39, right? So now I have all the aqua, all the purple stitch. So next on my hit parade would be number three, which is yellow. So then I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna do all my yellows, right? Then piece number four is white. So I'll do my four, I'll do six, I'll do eight, 10 and then 41. Now my next number is five and that's the um, lime green. So then I will just do the same thing. I'll go five, seven, nine, 11. And then we have her actual body. See, you just have a little, the little spots where she shows the outer edge of her. I stitch her there. And then I did all in a little circle all the way around. And don't forget that number 58 right there in the center. And next, let's see, are there any colors left? Do, 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 do. Then we'll finish with black. And so black, you can do this with um, a 12 weight thread, like by hand, or you can do it on your sewing machine, right? So I just did a straight stitch. And then for the eyes, I do a straight stitch and I go over it a couple of times to give it some depth, see? Super cute, and I'm making some fuzz from touching it, but a little trick, just put a little tape right there, it'll get that fuzz off. So let's talk about the stitch sizes that I did. I pretty much default to two and a half by two and a half for my width and my length, right? When it comes to a smaller piece, like all these yellows, I take that down. 
right? Because if I did a two and a half bite in on that, it's gonna touch in the center and not look good. So I actually take this down to a two, which means the, the length between the stitches are two, and the length of the bite in, I take it down to a one and a half, right? So that I have just a really nice dainty stitch. And I did that same size stitch on my green leaves. However, on her hands, the green on her hands and feet, I did two and a half by two and a half. So there is no right or wrong way for your stitch size. It's about what you like to stitch. And if you'll notice on all the flowers, we did a straight stitch, right? So on mom's original sample, she did a straight stitch. Remember there's 58 pieces and we wanna make it fun. So if you wanna do the whole thing straight stitch instead of buttonhole stitch, you can, cause again, it's your quilt and there's no quilt police here at Stitches of Love. This is meant to be fun. So I hope that you enjoy doing this. I do wanna give you a tip after you have, I'm not gonna um, trim this on the camera because I'm gonna stitch it. And when you're stitching, you know, your fabric gets wrinkled, you know what I mean? And you're gonna do one press before you trim it. And there's a couple different ways you can trim it. So when you have it lined up on your placement guide, you can do a couple different things. You can one, trace this line with a friction pin or a Pigma pin, right? And give yourself a trim line of this outer line, the furthest out line, right? Cause it's a nine and a half inch square block. So you can do that, or you can actually like, you know, be scientific and like measure and then turn it and go nine and a half inches. So however you feel comfortable trimming it, um, I typically trace the line because I just find that easier and less complicated. And before I cut, I do like measure and make sure, you know, oh yeah, this is nine and a half inches. And that's why I like to use the friction pin because it disappears. Let me grab it for you and show you. Right? So when you're tracing this line, and again, I'm not gonna cut because I haven't stitched this piece yet. You line up on that black line, right? And you draw your line. If I realized, oh no, I did the wrong part of the line, all you do is go like this. And look at that, it disappears with heat. So pretty cool, this friction pin is my best friend, I love it. Okay, so I hope that that is useful and helpful tips for you, for your machine applique, for your U-Troop. I can't wait to see yours done. You'll have to send a picture to us and share it online. And again, you have your really cute binder that you can keep your pattern in every month. So you just put your pieces in here. And at the end of the year, you have an awesome binder filled with a great pattern. All your placement guides, because they're full size, we don't put holes in them. You're just gonna wanna store that in the front and back of your binder. So that's it for this month. This is your really great um, block, Miss Petunia from the U Troop with our friend Amy Brooken, and then of course us, Stitches of Love. Thank you so much for being a member, and we can't wait to see you again in June for our next block.